Welcome again to this series of programming PIC microcontroller with flow code for absolute beginners. In today's tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use a keypad with flow code. A keypad is basically a combination of push buttons in a way to form rows and columns. This example shows a 4x3 keypad, which means we have 4 rows and 3 columns. To determine which key that was pressed is a tricky situation. One has to write some function to scan the whole keypad to determine which specific key that has been pressed. This can be achieved when somebody can output a signal into the row that the key is on and check the corresponding column. If there is a signal on the corresponding button, because this is basically a push button, if this button has been pressed, and let's say I put a signal on this row, then I can check in which column where I'm going to have that signal. If I get a signal on this, this column, then it means it, it was one that was pressed. This test is repeated for all the keypad keys, allowing for the de detection of a a press key using a single routine. It sounds difficult, I guess. If you are not an experienced programmer, you might be intimidated by this. Fortunately, Flowcode simplifies all this for you. Let us go back to Flowcode and see how this can be achieved. To insert a keypad, you can just go to the input group Click on keypad and the keypad is going to be inserted on the panel. Click on the keypad, then you can change the properties. If I click on X properties, I can change the way my keypad looks like. On the keypad types, I can Select as I'm going to use a 4x3 numeric keypad, a 4x4 keypad, a 3x3 keypad, or even a custom keypad where I can select my number of columns or the number of, of rows. Then you have to drag some image representing your buttons. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the 4x3 numeric keypad. In the numeric values, these are the numeric values that are retained when the key is pressed. If one is pressed, then the numeric value that is gonna be retained is gonna be one. If there is nothing that is pressed, then 255 is retained. You can always edit these values to say if you want, when one is pressed, then you want, let's say, two to be retained. You can do it, depending on your application. The S key values, these are represent the S key values that are retained when that specific key is pressed. The size. This changes the size of the component in the simulation panel. Okay, I'm going to say okay. Click on the connection to specify on which port of the microcontroller you're going to connect your keypad. In this example, we're going to connect our keypad to port C. As you can see, you don't have to connect the columns on the same port. You can either co connect the columns on one port and the rows on the other port, depending on what you want. 
In our application, we're going to connect everything on port C because we've got more, enough, more than enough pins for our application. This is a default connection. Colon 1 is connected to port C bit 0 and so on. In our application, I'm just going to show you that is is possible for you to specify which bit of the microcontroller where you're going to connect your columns and your rows. I'm going to say row A, I'm going to connect it to bit 0. Bit 0. B to 1. Row C to 2. Row D to three, and then colon one to four, colon two to five, and colon three to six. I'm gonna click done. That's all in terms of connection. The keypad has got only two micros. You've got the get keypad number if you want to return the numeric value of the press key or get keypad S key if you want to return the S key value of the press key. Whenever you use this make this macro you always you always need to declare a variable that is going to return the value of the press key. Okay, it has to be a byte. Let me create a new variable, a byte variable. I'm going to call it key. Shall values, okay, doesn't matter. We just say zero, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Then if you click on get key, then you can return that value that to represent the key that was pressed and that's all it's very easy straightforward in flow code nothing complicated let us create a simple program using a keypad and an lcd when the this program is gonna start the lcd is gonna display matrix keypad on the first line and student companion on the second line then after two seconds it's gonna display press any key then whichever key you're gonna press is gonna be displayed on the lcd let me delete this so that i can start from scratch the first thing i'm gonna need let me insert an lcd okay I'm going to connect my LCD to port B. Okay. Going to need to initialize my LCD. That is the first thing. Start. Then I'm going to display LCD print string matrix keypad okay then I'm gonna shift my cursor to the second line x0 y1 okay then I'm gonna display Print string student companion on the second line of the LCD. Then I'm just gonna put a short delay, let's say two seconds. After two seconds. I'm going to clear my LCD, then 
I'm gonna display print string press any key okay then here I'm gonna need a while one loop so that it can loop continuously then I will need to read the keypad get keypad number then I can return the value of that specific key that was pressed into the variable key I'm gonna need to find out to check if key is less than 255 it basically means that a key has been pressed because if there is nothing that has been pressed the keypad is gonna return the value of 255 okay if key is less than 255 if the answer is no not gonna do anything but if the answer is true then okay let me delete whatever is displayed on the lcd lcd clear then lcd i can display print number the value of the key then i can display on the lcd the value that was pressed that was pressed and maybe it's always good to put a short delay between the reading time you can just put even let's say 20 milliseconds Okay, let me run this. Now see matrix keypad student companion. Press any key. If I press one, it's gonna display one. Five, it's gonna display five. Nine, it's gonna display nine. Star, it's gonna display ten. Zero, it's gonna display zero. And that's all for this tutorial, guys. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more updates. Thank you.